updates for directory. If you can grab one for yourself, that would be great. And if you see anything that needs to be changed, added, subtracted, whatever, please let Dory know so we can get that done as soon as, as, we, as we may. Uh, we, there we go. Uh, as we're getting ready for the ice cream social, uh, we're going to need help. Uh, quite a few items, things like uh, if it's good weather, then moving tables and chairs outside to get them set up uh, out, out here. Uh, if they're if it's not, we'll still need help getting things set up down in the, the fellowship hall and breaking things down afterward. Uh, if you check with Dory or with Sue, um, they'll give you better ideas as to what it is we need than I will be able to give you. Uh, at that point, I just join in with the rest of you and become a little worker bee and I follow orders. So if you really want somebody who knows what they're talking about, ask one of them. Um, other announcements this morning? Susan. Please ask the neighbors to come to the ice cream social. Can't have an ice cream social without people. Yep, they ask your neighbors, bring, bring them along. Um, we still have you get three or four signs back there that can be, can be grabbed um, and, and put them out. Um, I know I've seen quite a few out there already, but it wouldn't hurt to have more. Um, anything else in terms of announcements? Uh, good to see you home and here. That, that is great. We miss seeing your smiling face when, when you're away. So <laughs> it's good to see you. Um, as we move into joys and concerns, that also, uh, because you are sitting there, uh, beautifully between your parents. Happy anniversary to you guys. You, I know you have an anniversary coming up this week because yours is a week before ours. So <laughs> happy anniversary. Um, Josh Pierce is home. He is having uh, <coughs> anti antibiotic shots uh, once or twice a day, uh, but he's, he's coming along. Uh, we are thankful that he's doing so well as he is because he came pretty close to not being having that lovely conversation because of the level of sepsis he had with the, the infection. So we're incredibly thankful for that. Uh, please keep uh, John and Cheryl P. trapped in your prayers uh, as we continue to do. But John wound up uh, having to have a port uh, put in his head. Um, and he's about ready to have to go in for a 10-day course. That, that's correct, right? It's a 10-day course uh, infusion, uh, chemo infusions at Hershey Medical, uh, which is going to put kind of a damper. He said that's their 51st anniversary uh, coming up while well, he's in the hospital. So that, that kind of a, a, a damper there. Uh, keep um, Cheryl and her, she continues trying to make the drive back and forth from home to Hershey uh, and try to work through a f possible flare at the same time with her MS. Uh, Brandon Kind is doing better than, than uh, he had been, uh, having been able to find the, the hole that was in his lung after his accident. Uh, they got that patched up and uh, Dory, you said they're hoping he'll be able to get home in the Early. beginning of the week? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we've got yeah, another week or uh, <coughs> yeah, another week. We've got the beginning of New Wellington Missionary Conference. Please keep that in your prayers. Uh, as well as please keep uh, the situation in the Sudan continuing your prayers. Jim Lewenberger in particular is asking for that as well as trying to get some designated giving through the Presbytery because that situation is in both Sudan and in South Sudan uh, becoming in increasingly difficult to navigate and, and to get through. Uh, others we have this morning. Alan. 
We have a joy for you. With your confession last week, we want you to know that as your church family, <laughs> and with Bible school coming up, you're, we're preparing. We're preparing you for it. For those of you who may have missed what I said last week, I was talking about the fact that swimming for me is not a form of entertainment <laughs> because I would swallow CO2 cartridges to stay afloat because I naturally sank while I, I'm now set. I even have my own little water so. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Tom. My friend Dale Grove is out of the hospital. He ended up not getting a pacemaker. They were able to regulate his heart with medication. Okay, Dale Grove wound up not having a pacemaker, but they were able to adjust meds to, to get the... He's back in quality of life living center, yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're glad for that. Uh, others? Okay. Let us take a moment and prepare our hearts to come together before the throne in worship as we listen to the prayer. <laughs> God has gone up with a shout, 
the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. Let us join together in singing, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Yet Christ died for us. He rose for us. 
He reigns in power for us and he prays for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. The old life is past and gone and the new life has begun. Let us give glory to God for the forgiveness we receive through his Son. Right to the end. <laughs> um, 
when you're out on any given day, who usually takes care of you? Mom and dad, right. And we depend on that, right? Well, skipping right to the end, Bennett, <laughs> the, the, this scripture lesson we have this morning from Psalm 8 starts and ends the same way. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Uh, we just had Mother's Day and Father's Day, right? And what do we do on Mother's and Father's Day? We celebrate the, the parents that, that we have and we're thankful for, right? Uh, every day, we have the opportunity to celebrate God who is our parent, who tells us he's our father. And even when things can get scary and it, it can seem like we are completely lost, who knows where we are? God does. And that means that there's no place we can go. That whole psalm goes through and it tells all the places that God has in his control. And that he has put us here on earth to serve him and to love him. And to give him that praise and thanks. And that means at the same time that we're never outside his control. That no matter how bad things can seem, we always have someone we can turn to because he always has his eyes on us. Okay? Lord, we ask your blessing on us. We ask that you would strengthen us, that we can follow you, that we can look to you, and that when we're in trouble, we can come to you and cling to you. We ask all this in your son's name. Let us join together in singing Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. What do 
you always have to do when you have an equation? They tell us that we always have to solve what first? The parentheses. What's in the parentheses or the brackets? That has to be solved first. This is set up that way for us right, up, right from the get-go. That this sum has its own brackets. That it, it, as I said to the kids, begins and ends the same way. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And it ends just exactly that same way. That in between is where we live our lives. But that means that nothing happens that's outside of those brackets. That is huge. That is so incredibly important, particularly in a day and a time where more people seem to be suffering from depression than ever before. When you turn on commercials, and if nothing, we, we, we have commercials all the time for new medications for mental health disorders. And I'm not saying those things don't exist, they do. But how many people suffer from desperation and destitution because they can't see the hand of God at work in their lives. That they don't recognize that they have a creator or that they have a need. It is like when we were little kids and we got lost. Now, I, I remember it was the Stephen Richards department store on Banksville Road in Vermont. And I was with my mother, and I decided it would be a really neat idea to hide inside one of the circular clothes racks. That was great until my mother didn't realize I wasn't right with her, and she started to walk away. And I didn't see her, and I about lost my mind. <laughs> By the way, in case you hadn't noticed, I have a voice that could be considered one that carries. <laughs> um, I assure you that before my voice changed, it was high and piercing. I don't think there was anybody in Stephen Richards who didn't know that I was on the loose. Um, Alan has the perfect t-shirts for that this morning. Uh, Alan, stand up a second. Um, if you can't see it, it says, in my defense, I was left unsupervised. Uh, thank you, Alan. I love when people come with their own object lessons. Um, how often have we put ourselves in a place where we were unsupervised. And yet, we're never, again, we are never outside of God's ultimate control. And the fact that he has put his hand upon us, he has put his mark, his image within us. And he's done it in such a way that as we look at the world around us, it continually gives testimony to his handiwork. How many of us have gone someplace to look at some natural wonder and have just been, had that sense of awe come over us? Or seen a sunset that was so, or sunrise that was so incredibly beautiful that it took your breath away and you could feel the hairs on your arms and the back of your neck stand up because it was just more than what you could you, you could imagine. I think we probably all had that. And that's, that's what we see. You have set your glory above the heavens. And who can understand that? I, I mean, we, we get testimony of it. it. It was great to have Ben go right to the end. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, 
the kid in Sunday school who's about to be asked a question of the Sunday school teacher who says, the answer is Jesus. And the teacher says, how do you know? I haven't asked the question. The answer is always Jesus, isn't it? <laughs> and yes, it is. But it's made that way in such a way that even babes and infants can suss it out when sometimes we adults have a lot more trouble wrapping our heads around it because we want to take things apart. There was a great story about my grandfather who got hold of his father's uh, presentation watch celebrating his 25th year with the company for which he worked and Albert, yeah, the guy I was named for, um, decided it was time to see how a watch worked. And he took it into the bathroom. And he took a nail file and pried the back off. And then he wanted to see how the gears and the springs worked. And suddenly his sister Miriam came and knocked on the door to let him know that mom said it was time for dinner and that he had to come out right now. Miriam, I can't come out. Why? Why not? Because I can't put it back together. What can't you put back together? Papa's watch. Yeah, well, it, it, it didn't end well for the watch. It didn't end well right that day for my grandfather either. Um, and yet how often do we overcomplicate things and we try to take them apart and in taking them apart we lose the pieces. We didn't have the schematic, we didn't have the diagram. It's like trying to follow the directions on an IKEA take home do-it-yourself furniture project kit. Is there anybody here who's actually good at following the directions in an IKEA kit? Um, it, they never make sense to me. I remember the first piece of furniture Tina and I bought after we got married was a hutch. You know, narrow top and a much deeper bottom. And they wanted us to build it upside down. Why would you put the wide part up at the top so that then it rocks back and forth and it's going to fall over and crush you until you flip it over. How often do we do that to ourselves? And yet, it is God who does hold us in the palm of his hand and he cares for us. And he has the established strength and he lets us know who he is. And we tend to read over this because we're used to Using the phrase, the Lord our God, we hear the Lord our God. How often do we stop to pay attention to how Lord is formatted in the English typeset, in Latin letters? That it's all in capitals. That represents what in Hebrew is called the tetragrammaton, or four letters. That it is the word Yahweh, which is a verb form of to be. So literally when God tells Moses, tell them I am sent you, he's, he's giving his name. He is saying I am Yahweh. I am that I am. I was what I was. I will be what I will be. There is nothing that happens outside of my ability. And he gives us his personal name and tells us exactly who he is. We know that he is our God, but we also know that he cares for us and that he is apparent for us. And how much difference can that make when God is not hiding behind his title, but he is coming to us and saying, I am Yahweh. I am that I am. I am here for you. It's a personal name. What is one of the most common
forms of intimacy we share with people. Our names. Not just our last name. I, I, I mean, how, how many of us got our ears boxed if we dared to refer to an adult when we were kids as by, by their first name? It, you had to call them Mr. or Mrs. You had to call them ma'am or sir. That's just the way it was. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised my ears aren't larger than they are because uh, it only happened a couple times, but I, I got a good tug from my mother if I, if I stepped out and I didn't pay attention. And yet God himself tells us that he is Yahweh, our God. It's personal. He cares about us. He has touched us himself, and he works through us. And yet as we look at that, that same personal God is the very one who puts the stars in the sky, who has created all that has ever existed. Think about the enormity of that. How many of us have seen the stunning photos that have come from either the Hubble telescope or from the new Webb telescope? And you see these galaxies someplace else. You see quasars and pulsars and I, names I can't even pronounce. And you look at those and how did that get there? Because God himself has done it. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars that you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? the son of man that you care for him. As I was thinking about that verse, that's where I was thinking with the kids about being lost. How many, many times do we feel incredibly insignificant? Because we look at the scope of all that there is around us and we're just incredibly tiny. And yet we are not incredibly tiny or insignificant to the God who has crafted us. And how do we know that? We know that because God himself has condescended to come into our midst by his son. He became one of us. He became the one for us. That he cared enough, literally, to... It was not FDD that came up with the expression sending your very best. God sent his very best to us. When he fashions us in his image, it's not a matter of how we look, it's a matter of what is inside of us and that which is upon, that he has put upon us. That every person has that image of God within them. It may be marred, it may be crudded up, it may look like the medicine cabinet mirror right after you finished brushing your teeth, and you got all that hook all over it until you wipe it, wipe it off and clean it up. But everybody has that image which tells us that we are incredibly important. We can ask ourselves, how is it that you care that much, God? And yet he says, I do. I absolutely do. And this is David's recognition of that. And it points to the fact that Jesus would come. Because it talks about what, what, are, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him. It's a point to Lord, how that is to be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Yet you have made him little lower than the heavenly beings, crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, beasts of the field, birds of the heavens, 
The fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. We have been gifted a certain level of control that we are to exercise responsibly, that we are expected to work through as positively as possible. How often do we fail? How often do we go herring off with our own plans and our own desires? And yet in the midst of that, God still does not let his hand off of us. We can see great catastrophes, we can see great disasters, we can see the brutality and inhumanity of people toward other people. Consider that in the last hundred, well, 110 years, we have seen literally millions upon millions, tens of millions, multiple tens of millions of people who have been tortured, executed, murdered for no particularly good reason. That Satan may think that Satan is the one in control, but he is not. God is still in control and he holds us in the palm of his hand and continues to work through and in us. I know in Sue's class this morning, Sue was talking about a particularly, and I think we probably all remember it, a particularly potent piece of video that came out about five, six years ago uh, in, on the shores of the Mediterranean in Libya as ISIS was moving through Libya and there were 30 Christians who got rounded up and put on that beach and told that they needed to repent and claim that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his prophet and they refused and they proclaimed their Christian faith and they died literally singing a song. And that among them was one who had not been firmly established as a, as a Christian, yet who looked at this testimony in the face of death, literally seconds away from death, and said, I see the faith of my friends, and I claim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then he met him. This is the God who comes down for us, who touches us in particular, who has selected us, who has the hairs of our heads numbered. Granted, for some of us that's less difficult than for others. But he knows us literally inside and out. Everything we have ever been, everything we have ever done, everything we have ever followed up, everything we have ever gotten right. And in doing so, he claims us as his very own. Which gives us that ability, again, to look to him with wonder, with joy, with thanksgiving. To claim together, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Think about that the next time you're listening to a Christian radio station. And I, I, I like contemporary Christian music as much as the next person. But if you ever stop to listen to how self-referential much of that music is, this psalm gets it exactly right by solving what's inside the brackets and solving that first. Why are we that important to God? Because he has made us important to himself. He has placed his image upon us and he has sent us his very best. 
O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Solve that, and the rest comes into focus. Amen. Let us stand and affirm what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us join our hearts together before the throne where we are assured that our prayers of faith are heard and will receive an answer. Almighty and everlasting God, you who have not only created us and breathed into us the breath of life, but have, in, have placed your image within us. We come to you, frail, broken, often frightened and lost, and yet there is no place where we can hide from you, that you see us and know us. and that you have provided a way that we can see and know you. That we may be forgiven and restored and made new and made fruitful. That there is literally no place we can go where you are not there. Lord, we ask that you would use us show to the world how important and how loving that truth is. The ways in which we are strengthened and healed and restored. May that be a testimony that draws people to us and to you and not repels them from us. Let our every thought be contained in the parentheses that indeed your Lord is majestic in all the earth. Lord, we ask that you would touch those who lead us in our nation, the leaders in other nations, that you who rule would use them, but also draw them to yourself. We ask that where they take seriously their call to leadership, that that might be strengthened and multiplied, and when they seek to ignore or subvert that very call, you would discipline them. Or keep us holding them in prayer and accountable, because you have chosen us to be your priesthood of believers, that we are called to intercede in prayer for them, to lift them up. Lord, we ask in a particular way 
that you would continue to abide with John and Cheryl, that you would bring the touch of your hand upon them and, and healing. We ask that you would continue to abide with Dale Grove as he is doing better and it has returned to his home in those apartments. Lord, we are thankful that you have brought some measure of healing to Josh, that you have touched him and protected him in the midst of such a devastating and fast-moving illness and that you bring him through. Lord, we ask that you would be with Brandon, that you would continue to heal him from his motorcycle accident and that you would return him home swiftly. We ask that you would be with the church, particular, the whole of the church, but particularly with brothers and sisters in the Sudan as they suffer from great difficulties, from war and from injustice, from persecution, that you would continue to strengthen that church and make the witness continue to go out be with those who plan and, and staff and work through and then share in the work of the New Wilmington Missionary Conference as it comes. Lord, as you have touched so many through that, we ask that you would continue to do so. Lord, for those concerns known to you alone. We ask that you would continue to touch them. We trust that your spirit intercedes with groans to you for words when we don't know what to pray for as we ought. Trusting that, Lord, we make bold to come before you praying as your son has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us come before the Lord bringing our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. <coughs> And joyful thanks for what he has freely given to us by his love and his grace. <laughs>
come before you in thanks and in praise for all that you have done, for all that you have bestowed upon us, for all that you continue to do with and in and through us. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this portion of what you have placed in our stewardship and keeping, that you would receive us and them as continued and real sacrifices of thanks and praise, that you would bless and multiply and use us for the continued work of your kingdom, the proclamation of your good news here and around the world, now and until your Son returns in glory. All this we ask in his name. Let us close our worship time together by singing to God's glory, to God be the glory.